Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now our very next guest is a very special one because he's a young man who has worked his way from the ground up and has clinched himself several awards and most recently the Future Awards Africa Prize for Fashion. His name is Tosin Ogundadegbe, popularly known as Style Infidel and of course he stands out with his very unique styling. Today he'll be joining us to talk about storytelling through styling. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having Welcome, me. Welcome, so Tosin. Humble. Hello, how are you doing? Okay, if I may ask, why the title Style Infidel? Because I've been thinking about <laughs> this. Such an infidel. <laughs> Sorry. I just have to ask. I, why? I, I don't do the norm. Okay. I don't do the norm. And I was actually inspired by Sarah Jessica Parker, popular as Carrie Bradshaw on Sex and the City, where oh. she said she was cheating on furniture with fashion. Wow. Wow. Now, <laughs> Tosin is one very passionate person, very, very passionate about his art and his craft. Thankfully, I was there, of course, on the Future Awards African Night, and his acceptance speech was everything. You could tell that he was passionate about it. We have a video clip of, the, of him receiving his award and crying us a river. So we're going to take a look at the video, and when we come back, we'll be speaking some more with the style infidel. You could, due to circumstances beyond our control, we apologize. <laughs> yeah, that video yeah, yeah. has a, a bit of an issue. We have some technical issues. But that was the video where Tosin received his acceptance speech and was weeping profusely. And not one eye was left dry throughout the audience. He was emotional, as we can see from the clip. But unfortunately, we can't play it because of the audio. But I'm going to ask Tosin, at the point where you were announced as the winner of the Future Awards Africa Prize for Fashion 2018, yes. and you were crying, Nobody else knows exactly how you felt. What were the emotions flowing through you at the time? And what was it exactly that brought those tears out? Um, the journey, the pain, the perseverance, the time I'd want to quit and I'd tell myself, this is what you are going to do. Uh, I was gisting with one of my friends, Max Viv, and they had mentioned my name the first time. I was just like, no, it can't be me. And then they called my name again, and I'm like, and I was like, Joseph, they're calling you. And then upon getting to the point, I was like, I will never cry. Why would I cry? For what? As a the, man, minute, the minute I stepped on that podium, everything flashed in my face. And I was consistently reminded of the process. I'm not even where I want to be, but I'm grateful to God. I'm not where I used to be. Everything flashed in my face. The days we got paid 2,000 naira to style. Mm. The hustle, actually. And knowing where I was coming from, I mean, you moved in from Ibadan to, to a big city like Lagos. I'm not saying Ibadan is not big, or Ibadan is not correct, though. But moving from that place that is not so fashion savvy to a community that is filled with fashion, and then being able to stand out on my own from the bottom, it's, it flashed in my face and I just mm. lost it. Okay. Now, when you talk about this journey, yes. can you share it with us? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Um... I had um, extra years in Ife, and I was so frustrated. I didn't know what to do with my life. I had totally even given up. I just wanted to get out of school and move on with my life. And I went to visit a friend in one of the halls. I saw them watching Sex and the City. And I'd always heard of Sex and the City, but I didn't know what it was about. What two episodes, and it changed my life. Changed my life totally. I put up a small style shoot in school then, and... I moved into Lagos. I interned with um, Arise Fashion Week. Many thanks to Latasha, who gave me that platform, and Onawan Chuku and Mojisola Daniels, who gave me that platform to at least do the little I could. So I started out as a writer. And as time went on, I just deviated into fashion. And the rest is <laughs> history. The <laughs> rest is history. From the, like I said, from the 20K job to the um, doing for pro bono and all of that, I just. My mind was focused. I knew where I was going to. I knew what I wanted. Most importantly, I was passionate. I wanted it. It was fashion or nothing. What was I, the most difficult thing about starting out as a stylist? In having, having people to believe in you. I mean, we had, I had people ahead of me that I had always looked up to. I mean, you already have that in the field of play. And then you now come from Ibadan and tell them, oh, you know how to do this. First of all, look at you like, uh, okay, where are you coming from? Who are you? What have you done? 
So it was a bit challenging to have people believe in me. But thankfully, I have to mention these names. Ijiro Emostafiri, Mofa, and Kola Kudos gave me my first styling opportunity. And I'm eternally wow. grateful to them. Wow. Yes. Okay, so now, as a stylist, yes. when you want to style a person for an event, yes. varying, or maybe a wedding, okay. or an award okay. night, what are the things you put into consideration when carrying out your job? Um, personality is very important because you can't take someone who is very understated and then tell her you want to make her look like Rihanna. She won't sell it. She'll be very uncomfortable. So personality is very, very important. You need to understand the client's personality. You need to understand the events they're going for. They can't tell you they're going for something presidential and then you make her look hoochie. It doesn't, it's the truth, it doesn't work. Or he tells you he wants to go for a movie award and you're, think, and you're thinking, oh, let me make him look gangster. It can't work. So you need to understand the personality, you need to understand the event, and at the same time, you need to work out a good budget so you don't shoot yourself in the foot. Speaking of budgets, yes. those in the entertainment industry know that styling is a big deal. That yes. So for those of you who think, oh, you're seeing your face on TV, wearing your new clothes all the time, brothers and sisters, <laughs> You know, let me just tell you the real truth now. It's styling. You know, they're not all their clothes, just so you know. When we're looking at styling, yes. what is the average budget? You know, you want to look good. You're not going to buy these clothes, of course. You're just going to style. Okay. What is... In fact, maybe we should go back to the basic of asking, what does styling involve? Okay, it involves creating an image, creating a stunning image, creating a believable image, depending on who you're styling. If, for instance, I have a client who is going for... who is going to contest for a political post and all of that. I can't be putting her in shimas and all of that now. You need to bring it down. If I have someone who is an actor, a celebrity, you always have to look good. It's, it comes with that terrain. It comes with being in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. So it is basically creating a believable, a believable image, a remarkable image, an image that um, strikes with your audience. It so is that, very, that involves outfits, shoes, shoes makeup, accessories. jewelry. And most importantly, like I said, understanding where the person is going. So you can't be going down the road and then you tell me, oh, you want to wear that mono strap with all that sequin and down the road now. How okay. About? So now that we've established exactly yes. what is involved in styling, yes. let's talk about the average budget. Okay. So I'm a young girl, you know, trying to make my mark in the entertainment industry, okay. for example, and I have this series of events I want to go. What are the things I should take into consideration? And like how much? Give us an idea. Okay. A bracket um, of how much is your budget? Um, in terms of figures, or before I go into figures, I would like to look, I always love to use Lupita when she launched, um, when she was on 12 Years a Slave, that was Lupita's moment. Lupita hit us back to back with fashion and many thanks to her stylist. So when people come around and say, oh, I have this event, I have that event, and obviously all these things come with a budget, unless you have a, an understanding with your client that, okay, this is what you will do, or, okay, if you, I can work with you, I believe in your brand, I believe in your image. And I also believe that maybe when you start getting all the big endorsement deals, you would always to introduce me. me to the client as your stylist without mm -hmm. them going outside. For standard, personally, I feel 150, and it comes with the custom dress, actually. Wait, so 150 is for the outfit, for the... Minus hair makeup. Minus hair makeup. So for those of you who want to be in the <laughs> entertainment industry, you want to blow. You have it. <laughs> it's not beans. You know, it's, it's not beans. Speaking of, you know, hair and makeup. Yes. Do you also have to determine, you know, the what, the kind of makeup the person has yes. and choose makeup artists yes. as well? Yes. Yes. It is very important. You can't. It's like um, preparing um, beans, and then you get the beans, you put it on fire, and then you forget to put maggi. I forget to put onions, mm. and then you want beans porridge. You, for, you totally forget putting red oil. It's not so going to you make need sense. to. It's basically you sitting down with the entire team and your clients and making them understand. Okay, this is the look we're going for. Let's say, for instance, we're hitting twenties fashion, which was the era of glamour itself. We sit down. Okay, there's a lot of fringe in town now. How do we make it look different from what every other person has been doing? Okay, here and makeup. There used to be bangs that era. How do we do it to make it more contemporary? How do we do makeup and all of that? It is very important you guys are in sync. If you guys are not in sync, you can't deliver. You know your onions, really. <laughs> and we can tell with, from the passion with which you speak about this. Let's talk about the days or the times when 
you've yeah. gone, you've done your homework and everything, and you thought, man, this is going to be a killer. Ha. And then the class <laughs> comes out and is like, what exactly what's is this? I'm me? not going to wear this. Oh, yes, it's happened. So tell us. Yeah, that's Give happened. us an incident. I won't mention sure the name. <laughs> it's but okay. But it was AMVCA 2000, like three years ago, and I think, no, oh, two years ago, 2016. 16. Mm. We had planned everything out, and <laughs> what I always try to do is, when I pick a color, I always like to take a picture, so I would know if it photographs well. If it doesn't photograph well, I would totally stay away from it. But in my head, I'd played it, the illustration was perfect, so I just thought it was just going to look good, she would stand out, and then it went out. So I was <laughs> under pressure. Did you notice this before the award, or... You know, I had gone on the, the day. Oh wow! So on the day. So what did you do? Man, a hustler now. Ran around and went to look for something. So she wore something else. Yeah, she wore something else. But it was so painful to me because she is a very sweet person. Very, I missed all of this. She was just telling me, "Tracy, calm down. Oh. Calm down. Don't worry. You tried your best." Okay. Now but let's it was look, heartbreaking for me. Let's look at the ones where you, the clients <laughs> are not as sweet as this person you just referred to, and you've had to manage their emotions. Tell us, have you ever had an incident where you had a terrible outburst from a client, and how were you able to handle it? Um, looking at where I come from, the family I'm from, and I was raised to respect people and be humble regardless of whatever or wherever you find yourself. So when things like that happen, your client is always right. Your client has the potential of introducing you to 100 clients. And your client has the potential of taking away that 100 clients away from you. So when something like that, something like that happened to me, I had to apologize and refund. Mm -hmm. I had to. It's, people tell you, oh, no, you don't have to refund, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just, I just don't like trouble. I'm just a very peaceful person. And I just like to stay on my own. So at that point, I apologize, stay humble. And tell you, some clients will tell you, don't worry, Jason, you did your best. Some will tell you, okay, no problem. Send me your, send my money to me and they'll text your account number. But I'm thankful to God I'm still here. Okay. Yes, indeed we are. Thank you guys. <laughs> and um, you're, you're doing an amazing job. So Thank well done. So so I look forward to, wear, to being styled by the style infidel. It will, be all, it, will be an, it will be an awesome pleasure. Oh. So before we let you go, yeah. two questions. Okay. What is your mantra when you want to style, you know, with regards to your business and your passion? What is your mantra? And when we are all going to die one day, this is a bit morbid. Yes. When your time is done on earth, what would you like to be remembered for? So it's a two in one question. Okay, I think I'll start from the latter. As that passionate person who lived, the passionate person who cared about humanity, that passionate person who, who's never judged people based on their color, their orientation, and who they are, that person who touched lives with the little he had. And to the first question, my mantra is to be different. Like I'm, I'm, I, consistent, I consistently remind myself that I'm different. I'm not, I'm not, I'm limited edition. I'm not for everybody. Mm. You don't, I don't have to be the go-to stylist to everybody. I like the fact that the ones who come to me understand my value, know what I bring to the table. And also make, also realize that I actually own the table. Okay, so what's your advice? Wait, there? wait, you missed that last one. <laughs> also realize that you own the table. <laughs> really? I heard that. <laughs> and that was good. That Thank was actually you. good. Thank okay, you. I was actually going to ask you, okay. your, your, your very few words of wisdom consent to upcoming stylists who okay. want to be like you. Tr like I, I, I said this during Future Awards. Trust the process. It might not look like it now. Just keep working. I, t I mentioned being paid 20K to style. There were times I had to do pro bono. There were times you get to set. This is a pro bono shoot, though, and then the client is coming in how many hours later. You need to trust your process. That Mr. B got there before you, and because Mr. B just got there last year, doesn't mean you won't get there. Mm. Never be discouraged. People will tell you, what is that thing you are doing? What is that stuff you are doing? No way. Just keep doing just keep building, just keep creating. And trust me. One day, you one just day, yes. be on that platform receiving the future World Africa Prize for Fashion. I'm last, crying. last, we will do it right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you so, so much for having it's me. Thank you so, so much.
To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.